Hi everyone, thanks for visiting my channel. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. I hope you will consider subscribing. So today we are gonna be making and canning up some delicious pineapple orange marmalade. Marmalade was a request that I got from my Facebook canning group and if you are not a part of that, I encourage you to hop on over to Canning with Carol and Friends on Facebook, check us out and join us. We're having lots of fun over there. So anyway, marmalade was a request and I wanted to do something kind of festive and fun for spring. So I decided to do pineapple orange, a little bit of a tropical twist in light of the fact that we are getting out of the doldrums of winter and heading into some nicer weather which I adore so in honor of that we're gonna make things a little bit tropical so um, in my recipe testing I did have some fails as you can tell that is a fail um, all is not lost though I was considering and you can totally do this if you if your jam jelly marmalade does not set you can always open your jars and you can reheat it and um try to get it to set a second time and recan it and all that i'm not gonna do that my husband's like just use it as a sauce so i'm just gonna leave it as is so i don't waste my precious lids um and we're just gonna use it over ice cream or on top of a cake or whatever. So all is not lost. And honestly, when you put it in the fridge, it does set up a little bit more and you can still use it on um, toast or biscuits. It's just a little runnier than I would prefer. But anyway, because of that, I went on a mission to find a way to foolproof our marmalade. So we're gonna start with the recipe from the National National Center of Home Food Preservation. We're gonna start with their recipe for orange marmalade, and then I'm gonna change things up to give it its pineapple twist. Um, but we are going to um, do some things that will make sure that we get a good set. So I'm gonna show you three different ways to check it to make sure that it does set. When you look on the website for the National Center of Home Food Preservation, they do give you really specific information about the gelling point and I will link this in the description box below. I think it's important to read this. If there's a lot of good information here and they explain very thoroughly how to do uh, use the temperature test, which is just using a candy thermometer, the spoon or sheet test, um, which is you dip your spoon in your jam jelly marmalade and then watch it sheet off of the spoon if it sheets in one or if it comes off in one drip you're not there yet if it comes off in two drips and then uh, joins together that's what, and then comes off sheets off that's what you're looking for so they give you three different things to look for the three different stages so they also have graphics which i think is really nice and they do a great job of explaining it then the third way is the freezer refrigerator test so what I recommend is before you start your marmalade, take a couple of plates and pop them in the freezer. And then when we get to the point that we think that our marmalade is ready, we, you take your plates out of the freezer, put a little dollop on there, put it back in the freezer for a minute or two. And then when you move it with your finger, it should wrinkle. So that's another way to tell. But then they also go on to explain, and this is, I think this is the most foolproof way is with the temperature te test they give you a chart that is based on your altitude and tell you at what temperature you should be at for it to gel. I'm going to use the candy thermometer. I'm also going to show you the other two way ways to test it um, and we'll go from there. I really want this to set up and like I said I know that marmalade is getting it to set is a an issue for you guys so hopefully this will be some good information for you as well as just making the marmalade so the ingredients that we are going to be using is we are going to need four cups of peel from our oranges I have these beautiful navel cara cara oranges um, that I picked up at Costco when you are picking out your oranges because we are, are going to be including the peeling you want to make sure you pick ones that are not blemished in any way you want a really nice peeling on them and then make sure that you wash them really well I think that goes without saying we're, we are going to be including the peel so make sure it's nice and clean the other thing we're going to be including obviously is pineapple so we need four cups of our 
slivered peel from our oranges. We want four cups of pineapple that we are going to finely chunk up. Just as an FYI, pineapple holds its shape when it is cooked. So whatever size you cut it up to, that is what it will be in your marmalade. So you don't want a really chunky marmalade, obviously. You don't want huge chunks of pineapple when you're trying to eat a piece of toast. So keep that in mind when you are cutting it up. But we want four cups of fresh pineapple. We are not using any commercial pectin. So all of these components and things I've talked about are really important that we get spot on so that we can get it to set. Now there are recipes out there that use commercial pectin. I'm trying to steer away from that and do it the old fashioned way. So hopefully these things I've talked about will give us a really nice set. Now for Carol Twist, if you've hung around my channel very much, you know I have to have a Carol Twist. We're gonna be adding a couple tablespoons of Cointreau. This is totally optional, but totally delicious. You can use any orange or pineapple flavored liqueur in this. I think using liqueurs, especially in a jam, marmalade, jelly, just adds so much depth of flavor, something you can't get without it. So I'm gonna be adding a couple tablespoons of this at the end. You can leave it out, it's up to you. Or you could, like I said, use another orange flavored or pineapple flavored liqueur. So I'm gonna bring you in close and we're gonna get started. Okay guys, we are going to start with the oranges. We're just going to cut off the ends. And then we are going to use our knife and peel. You want to include as much of the pith, the white part as possible. That is where all the pectin is. So we wanna cut really close to the flesh. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut out my sections and I'm going to keep those and eat them another time. But for now, I'm just gonna set that aside. And then we are going to take our peeling and we are going to cut it in eighth of an inch slivers, so fairly small. Now for the pineapple, I just cut off the top. We're gonna cut off the bottom. And then we're gonna carefully peel it. Now one thing that I did learn in my test recipes that you wanna get all the way down to the flesh, you wanna get all of the eyes off if you don't, like if you left that, it shows up in your marmalade. So you wanna make sure that you get all of that off. Then I'm just gonna cut around the core. and then I'm gonna chop it. We wanna finely cut it up. Okay guys, I have four cups of the orange peeling in here, it's in an eighth of an inch slivers, and then I also have my pineapple that is finely diced. You have to make that judgment call for yourself how big you want it, but definitely a fine dice. Now, just to be clear, the reason why I did not include the orange segments is because I'm replacing, typically these would be included in your orange marmalade, but I'm replacing that with the pineapple, if that makes sense. So don't discard these, eat them, just section out your orange sections and save them for another time to eat them. Um, but that's why. Typically you would use that and you would need roughly four cups of orange segments chopped up. I'm replacing that with the pineapple. So now what we need to do is we need to add six cups of water. And we're going to turn our heat up to high bring it up to a boil, and then we're gonna reduce our heat and simmer, and we wanna let it simmer for about an hour. We want our orange peel to get tender. So I'm gonna clean up my mess, let that happen, and then I'll bring you back, we'll add our sugar and get our marmalade going. Okay guys, my oranges, orange peeling, and my pineapple in the water has been simmering for almost an hour now. So now what we need to do is pour in six cups of sugar. We're gonna turn the heat up and we're gonna stir that in. Okay, I've got my candy thermometer in. 
I am below a thousand feet. So their chart says at a thousand feet, you should be at 218 degrees. They're saying at sea level, you should be at 220 degrees. So I'm going to shoot for between 218 and 220 degrees. Once I reach 200 and 18 degrees, I am going to start testing mine with the spoon and with the plate. So we want it on a high heat, medium high to high heat. You want to bring it up to a full boil and it needs to boil rapidly until you reach that temperature. You want to stir it every now and then. You don't, you want to make sure nothing's sticking or scorching on the bottom. That would ruin your marmalade as well. So, okay guys, we are almost at 218 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and do the spoon test. You can definitely tell that it's starting to thicken. I can feel it how this is going to translate but it's still coming down in one drop so what I'm going to do now is I've got a frozen plate I'm going to take a little bit of my marmalade I'm going to put it on my frozen plate and I'm going to stick it in the um, freezer for one minute and kind of see where we are okay hopefully you guys can see see this is really hard to see because it's so light colored but we are almost there because when I put my finger in it and move it, you can see wrinkles around where I'm moving it. Um, and that's what you're looking for. The sides will start to wrinkle and it'll start to wrinkle when you move your finger through it. So we're close. I'm going to go ahead and cook mine to 219 degrees. I think that that's going to be good for me. Two tablespoons of our Cointreau. Like I said, this is optional, but really yummy. And you can see that it's nice and it's starting to really thicken up. So this is good. All right, next up canning. Okay guys, I got my canner and my jars ready while my um, marmalade was cooking. I have my rack in my canner. I'm gonna be steam canning. So I'm using my steam canner. I have my rack in there and I have three quarts of simmering water per the instructions for my canner. If you're water bath canning, you want enough simmering water in your stock pot that it will um, cover your jars by at least an inch. So also with your jars and your lids, we're gonna be processing for 10 minutes, so we don't need to pre-sterilize jars or lids. I just washed both of them. I set my lids aside and I have my jars, I'm keeping them hot in a sink full of really hot water. We are going to be ladling our marmalade into our jars to one quarter inch headspace. And I failed to mention this part, we are using the uh, eight ounce jelly jars. My house smells very tropical. <laughs> so pleased with this this time, I think. Sometimes it takes a couple of tries to get things right. Nice chunks of pineapple and that beautiful orange peel. So pretty. Oops. All right, once you get to your quarter inch head space, you're gonna take a debubbling tool, plastic butter knife, or a chopstick and poke around your jar. We wanna release any air bubbles. And then I take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar. You wanna clean your rims really well. We don't want anything to interfere with a good seal. And then you're going to place your lid. And then add your bands to fingertip height. Okay guys, I got eight beautiful jars and some change of marmalade. I'm really happy because you can tell that it's gonna set. So I'm excited about that. So you wanna crank up your heat on your canner. Like I said, if you are water bath canning, you wanna make sure the water covers your jars by at least an inch. 
for water bath canning, you're gonna bring your water up to a full rolling boil to start your processing time. For steam canning, you should have a steady stream of steam coming out of your steam vents about six inches long. Also, most steam canners have a gauge on top that will tell you when to start timing. So when we get there, we will start our processing time. We are going to be processing for 10 minutes. Okay guys, I am in my green zone on my dial gauge, so I can go ahead and set my timer for 10 minutes. Now, if you are uh, water bath canning, you wanna make sure you're at a full rolling boil. And then what you wanna do is you wanna slowly reduce your heat to just maintain a full rolling boil or just maintain staying in your green zone on your dial gauge. We don't want it boiling too vigorously throughout the entire process. So we're going to process for 10 minutes, then I'm gonna turn off the heat, remove my lid, let my jar sit for five minutes, and then I will show you this delicious marmalade. Okay guys, we are all done. And I think I fibbed, I told you I had got eight. I got seven and, a, and some change. Anyway, there it is. Look how pretty that is. I'm so pleased with how it turned out this time. So I hope that I gave you some insight into making marmalade. So I'm gonna show you up close and personal what it looks like. It hasn't even, this is what was left in the bottom of my pan and it really hasn't even set much yet. Um, but look how it has set up. So I know what's in my jars is gonna be fantastic. And You guys, it tastes amazing. Bright orange flavor with the pineapple in the background. It is so delicious. I hope that you will give it a try. So for those of you who are unhappy with your marmalade, in particular orange marmalade, and you say that it tastes bitter, I think that has a lot to do, a lot to do with the temperature you bring it to uh, for gelling. As a matter of fact, there's an article I came across when I was doing my research of a lady who did, she tested, she made several different batches and tasted them at the different temperatures. And it was interesting to read how she described how the flavor had changed. So I think the flavor of it has to do with how, what temperature you bring it up to as well. I'll link that article because I think it's really interesting. It also shows you how it gels at the different temperatures, what the set is like. So it's worth your time to read it if you're interested in making a good marmalade. 219 degrees was perfect for me. This is perfection. It tastes amazing. The You can taste the pineapple and the uh, orange peel have a very sweet, almost candied flavor to them. Now she, the lady who did the article I was telling you about, she does explain that if you take it too far, it can have almost a caramel undertone to it. So you don't wanna take it too far either. So it's really important to find that sweet spot. So make sure you visit all the links that I'll leave for you, some good evening reading for you um, to help you do get a better marmalade. So thanks for coming along with me today, guys. Leave me comments, questions, all that down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.